I'm joined now by Bloc Québécois MP Alexi brunel Ducep, Kayum Massimov from the Uyghur Rights Project, and Sherap Turchin from the Canada-Tibet Committee. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sherap, let, let's start with you. Um, you've decided that you're unhappy with the process the Special Rapporteur is following. What's your primary objection with what David Johnson is trying to do? Well, you know, uh, with all these things happening in Tibet right now, I think uh, when we try to you know, raise awareness about it, uh, we have been facing foreign interferences for a long time. And now we finally have this attention. We have been asking for this attention for many years. But now finally we have government attention, we have media attention, we have public attention. And we, when we have this attention, why not call for a public inquiry? Uh, we have not been consulted when the report, uh, you know, before the report was uh, published. Right. So we want to be consulted because we are the first line of victims when it comes to foreign interferences. So uh, anything less than the independent public inquiry, I think, uh, you know, would not really solve the problem of foreign interferences at this point. Right. So, so Kayum, let's just build on that for a mm -hmm. second because what I've heard, we've had like Alliance Canada Hong Kong on the show and other activists who have said, we're just tired of talking. Mm -hmm. We want to see action, right? We've testified at this committee. We've testified at this. How is testifying at a public inquiry different than participating in, say, the public hearings that David Johnson is going to lead? Well, uh, thank you, David, for inviting me. I was having a small chit-chat right before your session, and I was mentioning in 2006, I gave interview to McLean, and the, uh, the, the article came uh, under the title, Big Beijing Brothers Watching. Mm. You know, it was about uh, Chinese interference, and it was 16 years ago. So I wonder if at the current mood, at the current pace, will we having the same conversation in 16 years from now? Is that where we're we heading? And what's, what's the purpose of having uh, hearings? You know, it's a duplicate. Everything is open. It's been revealed. We testified on numerous occasions before the parliament. We have uh, alarmed CISIS. I was personally, uh, you know, contacting uh, CISIS on numerous occasions, interviewing and signaling uh, you know, intimidation, coercion, and blackmailing of our diaspora community members. So there is nothing much left we, we didn't cover. Everything is there. Everything is in, on, on record. So what's the benefit of an inquiry then? If it's already been covered, like I'm not arguing against it. I'm just hoping you it explain it to me. It has to be it to We have to be transparent on the oath. Right. And we have to go under, uh, like to the bottom of this mess, you know, where we are now. Unless there is a public light on it and no transparency and no accountability, we cannot get it. It's not about what happened, but what measures we are going to take right. from, moving, from moving on. How do we protect our democracy values and how do we protect uh, not only community members, but you know, Canadians? So it's, it's about sovereignty, it's about transparency, it's about uh, time acting. Like, you know, uh, there is a very uh, well-known uh, Latin proverb, acta non verba, deeds not words. Mm -hmm. that's, what, well, that's what you want. Mm. So, uh, Alexi Brunel, you helped bring these groups together today. It's quite the moment in, you know, in this, what we call the scrum area in the foyer of the House of Commons. Why did you feel it was important to, to do that today? Yeah, and, and I'm pretty grateful that uh, all groups said yes, and they said yes at the second I've called them. Mm -hmm. um, why it's important? Because no, nobody asked for them to give uh, their thoughts <coughs> about the, the inquiry. Mr. Johnson uh, tabled a report without talking to them for me, it's an insult. It's a, it's a lack of respect for those people who are, and Shirab said it, who are the first victim of in the Chinese interference right now. So with all the groups together, it's different. It is more powerful. It is more loud. They're, they, they speak, they're speaking with one voice. And they, they, today what they did, they asked the government to hear them. Mm -hmm. Because for the moment, as you stand with each time we talked about the first victim, the Tibetan, the Uyghurs, the Hong Kongers, the Taiwanese, and we even had somebody from the Solomon Islands. Uh, each time that uh, Trudeau talked about them, he said, we're going to reassure them. Well, they're not reassured at all. That's why they were there today. And their voices are, are, are better when they, they're, they're united. I think that's why we're on your show today. Uh, without, without that press conference, we, 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 couldn't have, uh, we couldn't have done it. So pretty proud of it. I'm pretty proud of them because, you know what? It takes courage for them to do what they do. I'm not worried about my security. And they have, they have family... Uh, uh, they have family down there in China, and they, they are doing something great today. So, Sharap, you want a public inquiry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like you're going to get a public inquiry, certainly not 
based on what the Prime Minister and the Cabinet Minister are saying and what David Johnston has said. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go ahead with the public hearings. Will you participate if you're asked, or are you prepared to boycott them? Well, um, you know, ideally, as I mentioned earlier, we would have liked uh, an engagement, uh, the consultation with uh, David Johnson before the report was, came course, out. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, we would participate if, uh, if we are asked to participate. But hopefully, I mean, uh, <clears throat> we live, uh, live in a very, you know, um, the instant comparison in my mind is always the situation in China and in Canada. Canada is a democratic free country. And uh, the way things are done here are, uh, should be transparent, should be democratic. And why the hesitation to have a, a public inquiry? If it is China, I would understand the hesitation to have a trans, you know, um, uh, something that is democratic, something that is transparent as public inquiry. But if we're talking about a free nation, Canada, and uh, I come here as an immigrant as in 2015, mm -hmm. and now I'm a Canadian citizen. And uh, not just, uh, I'm speaking not just as a Tibetan, I'm speaking as a Canadian who believes in the rights uh, of, uh, of a free, free, nation, uh, free citizen. So I, I would certainly urge, but uh, given an opportunity, I would uh, participate in consultation. So, so Kayum, given that this is mm -hmm. not what you want, and this is not what you would have asked for, the public hearing process, is there still some good that can come out of it? I know you did the interview with McLean's in 2006, but everybody's talking about this now. And it seems like there is a real momentum to bring in some reform. So do you think even with the process not being what you want, you can get some of the key changes you've been looking for? Uh, participating per se is not an issue. We always uh, welcome, uh, you know, any uh, hearings, you know, uh, we always there to present and be the voice for voiceless people. Uh, but what the real question is, what will follow? Will it be backed up by actions? Or will it be just uh, the, the public hearings resume, like the summary, will end up in the binder in, and will be collecting the dust somewhere, you know? Mm. So it's a, it's, a process, it's a processes and it's an action and it's what will follow up after that. And we would like to see some feasible, uh, tangible actions on, you know, because, you know, public hearings by itself, it's just, it seems to me, and many in our diaspora share the same view, it's just a smokescreen, it's just a delay tactic, which, you know, we found it's, uh, you know, unacceptable. We have to move on and move fast. Well, well Alexei, I mean, the, the government was slow to come to this, I think it's fair <laughs> to say, but the, there is an urgency now created by the pressure that's on them. They've announced things like they're going to create a foreign agent registry at some point this mm -hmm. year. Do you think they could possibly get away with having these public hearings, getting these recommendations and not acting on them? I remember one thing uh, <clears throat> Ms. Feng from the, the Hong Kong community said today. She said there's only one solution for, for Chinese interference, and it's a independent public inquiry. And she's a, she, she said it with a lot of strength. Uh, so, uh, I mean, maybe it's, it's, it will not come from Justin Trudeau because for him, it's good. Uh, what, uh, what is happening right now for him is good. He, he has David Johnson in front of him, taking uh, all the bullets, <laughs> and he, he's hiding, uh, uh, he's hiding uh, in the back of David Johnson. Uh, uh, the thing is, I think Mr. Johnston, at one point, you know, he had a reputation before uh, that matter, and now his reputation is not good anymore because of what's happening right now. So my point is, maybe David Johnson should decide to resign then, Justin Trudeau wouldn't have any choice of, of uh, launching this inquiry. He made pretty clear yesterday that's not going to Yeah, happen. but when you have victims of the Chinese Communist Party asking you to, to launch a public inquiry, independent public inquiry, how come you can stay your ground? This is impossible. If you are that much of a credible guy, well, then do the right thing. Do the, the, the thing that those people are asking you to do. I mean, if you have some values, well, listen to them. How come he didn't even call them before, uh, before writing his report? This is the first mistake. The second mistake is not hearing them today. Now we give him the opportunity to hear those people today. That was the message we wanted to send, and I hope he's going to listen to us today. So, Sharap, tell me, if, if you're not getting what you want, uh, but you will still participate in the mm -hmm. public hearings. I mean, what kind of a message do you think that sends to the government in its refusal to call the public inquiry so many of your groups are looking for? I mean, would a boycott not send a stronger message? Honestly, I didn't really think much about what should be our response until you really asked me this. Because uh, 
as you said, it's important that we send a message. Uh, if boycotting the engagement with David Johnson sends a stronger message, then that's something that uh, I should discuss with my community, uh, our group. Um, and I mentioned earlier in our press conference too, I, we really expected, because I was surprised when, you know, I kept waiting when the government would consult with us. We knew there was going to be a report coming out and we just kept waiting, waiting and uh, just never came out. And I'm surprised because we have been, you know, whenever we get the opportunity, we talk with, whether it's with the, you know, Global Affairs Canada, whether it is a member of parliament, we always talk about, you know, the issues that are happening in Tibet, especially in this current situation, when we hear about over oh, one million Tibetan children being put into residential school. And when, when our leaders, when we try to raise this awareness, we have been facing, you know, uh, a real example of foreign interference. Earlier this year, our elected leader uh, visited BC Legisl Legislative Assembly and the Chinese consulate there opposed it. Right? Yeah. Uh, last year, again, our leader from Dharamsala came here, testified before the Foreign Affairs Committee. Again, there was opposition from the Chinese consulate. So when we have real clear example of this, uh, so, Yes, please. Yeah, no, I got it. So, Kanye, and I, I want to make clear, I'm not advocating for a boycott. I'm just wondering why you, <laughs> you are participating in a process you fundamentally disagree <laughs> with. But, Kanye, I, I guess just, just a, as, as a final point, your frustration, because David Johnson says he's going to speak to diaspora groups as part of the second phase of his work. But it sounds like you're frustrated that you just weren't consulted in the first phase, where he made the call on whether or not he mm -hmm. would recommend a public inquiry or not. So, I, so what, what value do you think the second phase of his work can bring? Don't, don't see much value in it. It's empty rhetoric, just smokescreen, you know, delaying tactic. Uh, what else he doesn't know, or like what else he would like to know? I mean, it's, everything is in the open. It's been uh, recorded. It's been, uh, you know, reported by credible media sources, by MPs, by, you know, security elements. You know, I would like to echo Sharap here. Mm -hmm. you know, we as a community, we feel like being uh, victimized twice. First by China, before quitting the physical boundaries, and then in Canada, we as a Canadians do not feel protected. We do not feel safe. That we do not feel that our concerns are being taken seriously. You know, this is a sense of double victimization. You know, how come as as, as a Canadian I cannot exercise my freedom to to express my disagreement or agreement with the government, or you know vote for certain comp uh, for certain political party or oppose or let's say uh, stage peaceful protest in, in, in front of a Chinese consulate or embassy. Right. You know? So this is a sense of uh, double victimization which is very much persistent and very much present within the community. Okay, uh, gentlemen, I'm out of time, but I want to thank you all for coming in. Alexei Brunel, Deseb, Kanye Masimov, and Shirep Ch Churchin, thank you so much. Merci. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Merci.